Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Robin Shale. I'm a geologist at the Camborne School of Mines, and I'm going to talk to you about some of my research that relates to the geology of southwest England and its resources. So what we have here is a geological map of southwest England. And you can see in the top right hand corner, the area that's illustrated in yellow, we actually link in with the geology of Europe. Many of the rocks that we see here are between about 400 and 250 million years old. And the different colors that you see on these maps represent broad uh, rocks of the same uh, character. So what I'd like to run through with you is a little bit on the overall geology that we can see from this map. So the first thing I can point out is that we have what's shown here as a Devonian suture. What does that mean? A suture is where we have colliding plates. We get rid of the intervening ocean and we bring about continent-continent collision. Between those two plates, there was originally an ocean. And what I've got here is a great example from down in the southern part of Cornwall from the Lizard. And this is actually a bit of fossilized ocean floor from the Devonian. It's about 380 million years old. And what we're seeing here are igneous rocks that have formed underneath an ocean spreading ridge. So what I'd like to do now is show you some of the other rock types. This closure of an ocean and continent-continent collision was one of the principal tectonic events that affected the geology of Southwest England. And as part of that process, then what we see is all these different colored uh, geological units you see are sediments and volcanic rocks that were crumpled. As the plates collided, they were folded and faltered. So we have great complexity here in Southwest England. It's a brilliant place to come and study geology because we're actually seeing examples of plate tectonics as it was operating back 300, 250 million years ago. The other things that we have here are the granites. So we are underlain across the whole peninsula, Devon and Cornwall, by a huge body of granite. 45,000 cubic kilometers of magma were generated and injected close to the Earth's surface between about 290 and 275 million years ago. So we've got progressively from east to west, the Dartmoor granite, the Bodmin Moor granite, the St. Hostel granite, the Carmonellis granite that we're located on uh, where I'm speaking to you from, and the Land's End granite. And these are really, really important because they've underpinned the resources that have been worked historically and at the present time and also in the future. We also, across to the east of the area around Exeter, have a series of much younger red rocks which overlie these older crumpled and deformed rocks. So what I'd like to explain is the role that granite has played in underpinning the development of resources in this area. And ultimately, this comes down to understanding that this, this is an example of granite. So we have examples here of a mineral called feldspar, which are the large white crystals, quartz, and also a mineral that's called mica, which is quite sparkly. And so this is the material for which we have, you know, as I said, 45,000 cubic kilometers or so underlying Southwest England and off way to the west to, the, to beyond the Isles of Scilly. And this is important because it's controlled both mineral wealth, but going forward, it may also control deep geothermal energy. So one of the key things that we're all interested in is the role of reducing carbon emissions and our energy transition that we all understand is required if we're going to avoid uh, serious effects of climate change. And this granite can play a role in it. What you're seeing here is a map of Southwest England granites. And the numbers that you're seeing, so below Dartmoor 185, Bodmin 200, those are the projected temperatures at five kilometers depth within the granite. And the reason those temperatures are quite high, higher than they would be elsewhere in the UK, is because the granite has got small amounts of uranium and thorium and potassium in. Those are radioactive uh, elements or elements that have radioactive isotopes, and it heats the granite up slightly. So if you were to drill a one kilometer deep borehole here in Southwest England, 
it's probably about 40 Celsius at the base of the borehole. Elsewhere, across the UK, it's typically going to be 25 or 20 Celsius. Why is this important? This is important because to drill down to the depths that we need to have temperatures appropriate for power generation is hugely expensive. So if we can find areas in the UK where we don't have to drill as deep, then we can actually do it more cost effectively. And Southwest England is the leading area in the whole of the UK for the development of new green energy sources, deep geothermal energy. And we're involved through this research project of the British Geological Survey and Harriet Watt and Geothermal Engineering Limited at the United Downs Power Project. And what they're doing here is drilling into a fault zone. Granite doesn't have natural permeability. And so for fluids to flow through that, we need to fracture the rock or make use of an existing area where fracturing has taken place. And so they've drilled the UK's deepest onshore borehole, just over 5,000 meters in depth, to try and target these areas where the rocks are more permeable. And in essence, cold water passing into this fault zone will heat up with depth and will return to surface where power and heat can be generated. But that's not the only thing related to the development of green energy and meeting the needs of the energy transition. What I have here is an example of a mineral called mica. It's very, very common. But in the granites of southwest England, this mica is enriched in lithium, which everybody's aware we need for the development of batteries. So we have companies pre presently involved in exploration for lithium in southwest England. Not only is this the most prospective area in the UK for deep geothermal energy, it's also the most prospective area for the extraction of lithium for batteries. So we can either extract lithium from what's known as a hard rock source, where micas like this occur within the granites, and we have companies, uh, uh, British Lithium and Cornish Lithium involved in exploration for this hard rock source, or we can let the lithium come to us. This deep geothermal I'm pointing out here is an area where we might have high temperature fluids being brought to surface. And those fluids will have dissolved some of the lithium out of the granite at depth. And what I've got here is quite special. I have here a sample of a granite, which is from the bottom of the borehole shown on uh, the screen. And this is the deepest material that has been obtained onshore in the UK. So what I'm doing here is pouring out the granite which has been turned into a powder, sun-sized grains, because this has come from the bottom of the drill hole where the granite was being drilled. And you can see it's really, really sparkly. And the reason it's sparkly is it has lots of mica in it. And that's the mica which over time will react with groundwater and enrich it within lithium. If we can extract that lithium out of those groundwaters, then that's potentially a source of lithium for batteries in the UK. Okay, so the other thing I'd like to mention is if we go back further in time, not just looking at fracture controlled fluid flow at the present time, if we go back to the Permian period of geological time, so 290 to 270 million years ago, Fractures within the granites and the surrounding rocks were controlling the flow of what geologists term hydrothermal fluids, hot watery fluids coming out of the granites. And they were, they were metal rich. And I've got a really neat example here of where we have a granite which has been fractured. And you can see there's an area that is black within the granite. And that's where we've had quite high temperature fluids passing along that fracture and precipitating out new minerals which are black a mineral known as tourmaline. Those fluids were probably 350, 400 Celsius. At a later time, that same fracture has actually refractured and the white area you're seeing is a new infill. Many millions of years later, that same zone, because it was weak, fractured again. And we have another example of fluid flow within this fracture zone. So when these hydrothermal fluids uh, start to precipitate or form new minerals, they can be enriched in elements that might be of intro, interest to us commercially. So we see here a diagram which is produced by a, a scanning electron microscope carrying out, in this case, five million analyses of the minerals in a 30 millimeter across block. 
And what you're seeing here is all the separate minerals that are in that tiny block and they include minerals like chalcopyrite, which is a source of copper. We all need that for electrical purposes. Cassiterite, a source of tin. Every time you touch your phone, there is tin in the screen, which allows it to work as a touchscreen device. Wolframite, tungsten, right? Really important ore. And we carry on, zinc, arsenic we might not want too much of, and that flags some of the issues we might face with processing materials like this. So, what you need to understand is that there is ongoing mineral exploration in Cornwall for mineral resources as well. And if you hear people talking about mineral loads or veins, this is an example of one. This is actually from uh, the last time that tin was being extracted deep underground at South Crofty Mine. And this area of blue looking rock is actually enriched in the mineral cassiterite tin oxide. And this is actually really rich. It's actually quite dense because of the presence of this dense mineral within it. And this is where we would extract tin from. And there is ongoing exploration across Southwest England for tin once again. So let me just finish off with an example. You may think, well, look, you know, no one extracts minerals anymore in the UK. You are wrong. There is a world-class China clay uh, industrial mineral extraction operation in Southwest England run by Imeris. And this location, just outside Plymouth, is Hemmerden Mine. Between 2015 and 2018, it was operational, extracting this black mineral, wolframite, which contains tungsten, out of the granite, which is present in this area. Tungsten is a really important uh, metal globally, and much of it is produced in China, uh, perhaps 85%. But on the basis of this single mine, which was the first new mine to reopen in uh, England in 40 years. In 27, 2017, 2018, we became the fourth biggest global producer of tungsten. This is a world-class deposit that we have on our doorstep. So what I've provided you with is an example of how fluid flow through fractures in granites and surrounding rocks is important, both at the present time potentially for deep geothermal energy and maybe lithium in brine extraction. But historically, as we go back into the geological past and different tectonic environments, fluid flow has given rise to metal resources that are still of interest to us at the present time. What you've also seen is that Southwest England's geology is diverse. We can see evidence for plate tectonic processes in the past. And that what's make, that's what makes this a superb area to come and study.